welcome to Imperfect Channel. Destiny, show. what's up? And Destiny is here, and it was Tehran's <laughs> Destiny that his guest did come through. Another W for Tehran the Don. Yeah, hey. he, he, it just was, I was like, we're not being stood up. We're not being stood up this time. Because we got stood up once, and that was, it was a while ago, and they we never got feelings, over it. We got, but we we're didn't. so appreciative that you're here. You guys thought I was shorter mm-hmm. than I was. Well, this never happens. So oh, well, oh, oh, oops. Oh, no, no, no I'll take it. Around. I'll take we it. We just I'm, didn't even... We didn't even take. We didn't even move it around. We were just like, yeah, they'll yeah, come. Like, they'll be here. <laughs> they'll it reminds join. me of that Kanye line. It's like y'all should be honored that I showed up to this a fake s word. You know, that's what it feels like. Like we're honored to have you. Like oh, don't worry about you. being late. <laughs> thank you, know you know what I'm saying? No, me. worry about it. Here's so. the okay, thing. I'm super worried. <laughs> just to let everyone know, we have DJ, artist, TV producer, and writer. Bam. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Destiny in the building. Thank you, Destiny. Trifecta. No, Giving thank the you. Right perspective. Back at you. Giving us the female perspective on today. You yeah, you didn't catch the subjects, but we're going to talk about Nikki Yavino. I'll go into detail who that okay. is. Miss America, Kat Von D, and the Kate Spade suicide. Yeah, I just heard about that. I right think now. has become a thing. Mm-hmm. But let's get to know you a little better. And the way we do that is by asking you a bunch of either or questions to get a to get a foundation of who you are as a person. Okay, I like it. Okay, so I'll start out with kale or no kale. Kale all day. Cooked kale, actually. Cooked kale. I do live in L.A. I mean, you know, at first I didn't like kale, but once you have it the right way, you know. It's yeah, really it's not in bad. the trash can. That's the right way to have it. <laughs> in the trash can. Like, I'm not. All right. Um, bicycle or skateboard? Or I just want to say it like Ooh. this. Or surfboard? Surfboard? Either or. Oh, wait, wait. Of, of okay. the three? Bi- those are bicycle both. or skateboard? But, oh, sh- well, okay. I think skateboard. skateboard. I can skateboard a little bit. I can definitely bicycle better than I can skateboard. But bicycle that makes sense. bike that's, that's, that's it that's gnarly. the word bike better than i can skate but i skateboard actually you know what rollerblading Roller strangely blading. i was a professional like inline speed skater when i was like 10 years old really yeah that's strange how, but i was how do you, that's not strange that's loser yeah. hey that was me what <laughs> qualifies you as a professional at 10 you know what let's get into that I later know, right next question teron either or somewhere exotic or somewhere metropolitan so we're talking about the d- for difference what? between for like a trip. So are you going to Paris or Bangkok? Not even Bangkok, uh, Thailand. Which ones? <laughs> well, I've been to Paris, so I'll say Thailand. But which one do you usually prefer? Do you? What prefer I usually going to- prefer, ah, dude. I don't. That's a good question. I think probably uh, tropical, exotic. For me, because I mean, I live in a city, so I think if you go away, you should go away to something new. I'd like to see like some lions or some some weird stuff. Yeah, because I come home and you know I live in L.A., so I'm good. I've lions been like don't what, see one you. of my life goals is to see a liger, so I Ooh, could relate to those that. Those exist. Yeah, they do, and I, I want to see one. All right, so this is a really important question to me, and I need you to answer it honestly. Okay. Regular cookies or soft baked cookies? Ooh, soft all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, chewy. Yeah, think twice. <laughs> That's not a question. If you actually like regular cookies, you might be a serial killer. Like That's, the crunchy. Uh, yeah, I they're agree. like, oh, I like the ones that. No, no. No one likes. That's those. a cracker, bro. <laughs> Just a sweet cracker. Why do people make those type of cookies? I have no idea. I have no. I have no idea. All right, white guy or black guy. I just realized I'm the only one with headphones on, aren't I? Yes, but you are. You like we weren't going to point it out. I just realized that right now. I'm like, wait a second. You don't have them. You don't have them. You probably know how to work them better. Uh, All right. So white okay. guys or black guys? Uh, For what? Well, both. I don't discriminate. My dad's white. I, uh, I've dated pretty much every race, I think. So I'm pretty much down. You've dated a pygmy? Wait, a pygmy. Hey, that's a... Wait, is that like an albino? That's like an aborigine. I have not. Challenge accepted. (laughs) Um, A guy who has an assault charge on a professional boxer or a guy who robbed a bank? Wait, what? (laughs) A guy who has an assault charge on a professional boxer or a guy who robbed a bank, which one would you pick to date? Oh, the bank robber. He's got balls. I mean, both of them do, but at least that one for sure has See cash. See how bad guys win, fellas? That's what we're learning every single time. I did that time. for y'all. Every single time. Champagne or white wine? Uh, wine. Champagne makes me sick. I've, uh, in fact, 
Every time I drink champagne, it always ends bad. That and tequila. But wine is usually like... I bad as in you on the floor just throwing up? Yes, exactly. Okay. Correct. All right. Or bad like, what, Mr. Cosby? Why am I here? That's tequila. But uh, okay. champagne is, yes, throwing okay. up on the floor um, and embarrassment. Date number four, Netflix or movie theaters? Oh, so you can you put Netflix you in the movie theater? Well, you can start in the movie theater and end Netflix oh, at home. Yeah, Place so if the dude's right. quiet enough in the theater, <laughs> then you're date, like, yo. That's date number one. Date number four. You know how much you spent to get there? Like, you don't have money for movies no more after that point. Like, you're like, yo, let's. Nah, bitch, we watching Hulu. Okay, iPhone or Droid? Droid. I never, I've never owned, it's funny because I only have Macintosh computers, but I've never owned an iPhone or an iPod in my life. Yeah, I'm about that life. Always Android, yeah. And, th and this has, um, <laughs> you know what, iPhone all the way, whatever. This That's has okay. nothing. You're, you're not the cool one in this situation. <laughs> oh, clearly not. <laughs> you're not the professional yeah. rollerblader. I know. <laughs> That's not you. Not at all. I don't know if I'm I a see professional. Those caps. I don't think I'm a professional at anything. All right. Well, that's one. real, though. That's a real way to, uh, that's a real perspective is when you look at people and you're like, we're not professionals at anything. And that's why we're radio hosts. Okay, so check it out. We're professional radio. Um, but we're not. Yellow gold <laughs> or white gold. This is not a competition between Tehran and I because I stole the <laughs> chains from Tehran. Oh, let's see. Um, I think white gold. Just in general, not because of you or him. It's just let them let choose them and she you know? chose. And she has chosen. Uh, that's Dustin. a wrap. And that's Dustin. a wrap for this segment. Okay, let's say what would you do? This is okay. a, where we ask you a question. What would you do if? Mm -hmm. Okay, what would you do if you found out that you're? Let's. I don't know if your mom and dad are still married. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, not. Well, they never just, were. Let's pretend they were. <laughs> okay. And you found out that your mom was cheating on your dad. Mm. Would you tell? Hmm. Well, I've had something similar happen, not with a mom and a dad, but like two friends. And I, shoot, wait, if my mom was cheating on my dad, your would mom I tell my dad? Cheating, your mom mm -hmm. is cheating on your dad. Your dad's, he's one of those guys. He's working a lot. Really nice guy. And is, or is he a douchebag? No, he's a, he's a, he's guy. a decent dad. Everything's fine. But mom, and she explains it. And mom's like, look, this is just a thing. It's not serious. I just need attention what i tell my dad yeah, after my tell mom tells me no don't tell your dad exactly that's messed up um what i you know what i don't think i would tell him directly but i definitely like say some stuff to make him discover on his own because i think you, i think you so you'd be know. passive aggressive about it yeah totally <laughs> you, like you, most wouldn't you wouldn't be you wouldn't be direct you would well you i mean look it's your him. it's your parents yeah. It's really a lose-lose. So, you know, I think no one likes being told, hey, so-and-so is cheating on you, no matter who it is, parent, friend, whatever. So I think the best thing is kind of like to lead people. Or maybe I tell my dad, hey, dad, you know, I think you're dropping the ball. I, you know, I think maybe you and mom need to have a talk because something's you know what not I right. Call you that, know what I mean? You know what we call that in the hood? Dry snitching. All right. <laughs> I'm a dry snitcher, I guess. <laughs> He's a dry I mean, snitching. you say that is dry snitching, but our popping and stopping this week is Drake versus Pusha T beef. Yeah. So Dude, that's, that's don't a, bring that up because this is going to be a conversation. Because look, if Drake loses and he's like no more this awesome star, then I don't get paid to do his parodies on YouTube yeah. no more. So I need Drake. Drake, I need you to respond, bro. <laughs> you got it in you. You watch KOTD. I seen you at the battle with Disaster and DNA standing right there. I need you to battle Drake. What would you do, George, if you're you caught your mom cheating? Would you tell? Like this is like, would you tell? No, I would not. You would just stay out of it. No, yeah, I'll would stay, you? I'll if stay you the caught the your mom out of cheating, it, would you make it known to her that you caught her? Yeah, I yeah, would. Definitely. So what, what I would do is I would make it known to her, and I would have more access to her bank account. That's exactly <laughs> <what I> like. <laughs> yeah. Like, just explore. Damn, mom. You know, it's, you know it's expensive. Silence. <laughs> Horrible. Blackmail your silence. own mom for silence. Like, hey, you know, because stuff like this that. happens. We we say what ifs, but all the what ifs we can ever come up with actually no, come up. So this is actually like this happened in real life with a friend of mine. Her dad came back to visit mom and all that's out of town. 
She said she's going out to dinner. She came back early and found another woman in the house. Oh, damn. In in her and not just in the house, but in her mom's bed with the dad. Oh my god! So what she did is she basically dragged the woman out of the house, and then she called me, and she's like, "Should I tell you know my mom?" And I'm like, "No, nah, bro. Like, <laughs> no, nah. right, you're a guy. You're a guy." <laughs> So, okay, as a girl, do you think you're more sensitive to your mom cheating on your dad than your dad? A hundred percent, yeah. If my dad cheated on my mom, I'd tell her in a second. But because it's, and I feel like we would do the opposite as a guy, we would be more understanding if it was a, if our dad was doing it, we might be upset at him, but we wouldn't, we'd be more reluctant. But I do think men generally will cheat for a different reason than women will. I think Ooh, sometimes can you expound on that? Because this is a hot topic. This has caused many debates throughout history and now. Okay, well, why is it different? Okay, so I do believe this. Like, and I say this from the bottom of my heart. I love men and women. We're both awesome and have our strengths in our own way. But women are definitely stronger for the most part than men in this regard. Because if you think about it, you there can be a guy and he's a great guy and he has a great relationship. And he's out with his friends and there's like this super hot chick. And she's like, hey, if you want to go, like no one will ever know. And he will love his girl. And then sometimes he might be like, ah, oh, well, she'll never know. It can't hurt. They're more likely to take the chance versus chicks. Usually a girl will cheat on a guy because he's dropping the ball. And they usually do it to be like, oh, you're not giving me what I need. But that's and I'm so gonna, much like, pressure. I feel like now it's, <laughs> it's like a report card and I'm being examined on everything I do. How do we not drop the ball as men? You know, it's a big I think, burden to carry. You know? <laughs> what What is dropping the ball? Now I don't even know what dropping the ball I is. I think it's just like the most important thing, relationships, is communication. You have to be able to talk to someone and be like, hey, look, I, I think passive aggressive is bad. Like if someone does something messed up to you, you should just tell them and be like, hey, look, I don't like you. What I don't like that you, you know, didn't show up when you said you were going to. And just tell them you're upset. I think women and men and people don't talk and say mm-hmm. when they're upset and then just build over time. And then you have these huge blow ups or all this like passive aggressive stuff where you just sabotage your relationship because you're not communicating. You know, I think you just have to be upfront and say, hey, look, I care about you. I like you, but you did this and that's messed up. Could you not do that again? See, that's what, I, each other. that's what I thought all along. I thought it was communication was the biggest thing. And then Prince CA, a friend of Tehran and I's, he's, I don't know if you're familiar with mm-hmm. his work. Yeah, yeah. So he posted a video about marriages saying that the number one reason why a marriage will fail is because a partner isn't giving the other partner enough attention. Yes. And so what about a guy like me with ADD? So you have ADD, so you like can't give them that much yeah, attention. Yeah, like I'm long. just I'm too much. Not only do I have ADD, well, I diagnosed myself. Well, oh, okay. actually, Tehran, sounds sorry, legit. <laughs> Tehran diagnosed me with ADD, but also as a creator, and I know you're in the creative yeah. space, so we're gonna get into all that later. And I was just explaining that this weekend. I was writing script, and I got stuck into the freaking world that I had written. So when people were trying to talk to me, my mind was so somewhere else that I couldn't come back to earth and yeah. stuff. So that's been, I think, a recurring problem with me is attention, you know? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the most important thing to, you mean like keeping focus and not getting bored in a relationship? Is that what you're talking uh, yeah, about? Yeah, I think it's more so this paying attention to this. Because <laughs> you give too much detail. Yeah, I think, look, look I think it's more. <laughs> it, it's it's more a whole story. Like, like, paying what attention gonna... to the smaller details, you know, the smaller uh, things, the smaller things that count. Well, there I... you go, Teron. There's my, what do you call it? That's uh, the punchline. The punchline. Exactly. Thank yeah. you. Sound bite, right? Sound there. bite. Yeah. That's a sound bite. There you go. Well, I think having ADD is fine. I just think the key is not like, I think a lot of people don't understand what a relationship is and they're like, we just spend time. Like, I sit across from you, you sit across from me, and we talk. And no, no, no. You're like, that will get boring after a while. Like, let's be honest. But I think the key don't, of not getting bored is like doing stuff together. So yeah, you're spending time with your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, and then not necessarily being like, oh, we're going for dinner all the time. Maybe you go for dinner. Maybe sometimes you do, you know, something random. You play paintball. You go watch a shitty movie. You know that's bad, so you can talk trash about. But it I feel them, like you know? people who 
aren't minorities do more of that stuff what about me like you know i'm, I'm in a traditional <laughs> home my people to socialize it's like hookah food yeah. music <laughs> eat more like what 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 you know what if i'm not up on my groupon game <laughs> Well, there's plenty of stuff you can do like creatively like for instance me and my boyfriend now like he has a house under construction and i went and helped him like polish windows like who would think that's what you would do for fun but with- wouldn't you rather have lobster ravioli than go yeah, and wipe windows no, no. i mean i do that too oh, i like it all it's oh, all about okay. you know like i'll have times where we go to fancy dinners or sometimes we'll just you know so it's about switching nothing. switching yeah. it up that's add because i think I think I have reverse ADD. I think I have like extreme attention disorder. So you you focus in on one thing like all the way. Yeah, and then oh. I like lose myself in it, which so might you're be Adderall. ADD. Oh. I like natural Adderall. Mm. I think I do because I can work on something for like sixteen hours not nonstop and like not use the bathroom even. Like just be like, oh, when you're done, you can pee. Yeah, that's a UTI. Here's the thing <laughs> yeah. about this, right? <laughs> Real quick before we get to our topics, when it when it comes to doing things, first of all, I just like not doing shit. So you have to be on my page. Like yeah, I do things all the time. I need to not do nothing right now. I don't even need you to talk right now. Like, okay, I need, us, shit. I need us to that. chill right now. I need, I need us to chill. That's number one. Number two. Number two. You say that with such authority. You were so sorry. You I came mean, across has- like the Godfather when he was just speaking. It's now. the robe. It helps. Yeah, right? I need. I need no conversation right now. Like, oh wait, wait, wait. Shh, 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 shh. Like even I want to be quiet right yeah. now. So, number two, when you're saying about attention mm-hmm. and giving too much attention, can that also be a problem? Ooh. Yeah, of course. Would you rather have not enough attention or way too much attention? Ooh, it's a healthy balance. Definitely attention, but not too much. But then you can just shut your phone off and be alone. That's true. See, my problem is I could function on low attention. So if someone doesn't give me enough attention, it all, almost gives me something to work for, and it becomes the icing on top at the end of my crazy creative day do you find that you're easily entertained or you it's hard to be entertained i feel that at this point in my life i am selfish because i have these goals that i want to achieve so it's difficult to entertain me outside of my craft you know you want to entertain me you know get me on tv yeah, start talking about what we do. If you're not talking about this, I don't really want to have this conversation. I don't care what Jane said to Kelly and Kelly did to mm-hmm. Stacy and Stacy said about Brian's boyfriend's cousin. Oh, I know. Like, you're I don't talking give about sh- basic I literally bitches. don't give a shit. Like, I, yeah, and it's not, it's dude. no offense to you. Basic conversation. It's just, this is pointless. Like, to me, all that is extra. And I don't like extra. I don't like extra sauce. I don't like extra oh, mayo. I like sauce. And I, I like don't sauce. like extra conversation. Like, it's pointless to me. I know what you mean. Like, when you talk to someone and they're like, oh, yeah, so Jenny was slept with Bobby's girlfriend. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, it's like, like who, cares? who am I going to tell? Yeah. Who do I know and why would I care? Good point. <laughs> so you, you ever feel like you're chilling with someone and then there's like an on switch goes on in their head and they just start talking and mm-hmm. it would be the same conversation if there was anyone else in the room yes. they were just having with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that happens. Okay, sorry, Teron, I cut you off. (laughs) Nikki Avino, 19-year-old student at Sacred Heart University, is being charged with felony evidence tampering and misdemeanor falsely reporting an incident for accusing two football players of rape at a party. Now, here's the thing. Uh, This young girl said she was raped. Her excuse was she didn't want her crush to find out what happened. Wait, what? (laughs) This is a true story. It's going to court right now. So So she was at a party. Mm -hmm. She messed around with two boys. No, she ain't mess around. Oh, and she, they came out. They they had sex. The guys, the guys admitted they say like we, we we had sex. That's the part that was unclear. But they definitely had sex. Uh, we yeah. I, we don't know the details because mm-hmm. whenever it comes to victims of this nature, the details are usually not released, and, mm-hmm. and so that's why we don't know the identities of the football players either. And we're not supposed to. When when you do find these things out, it's actually I think inappropriate. Like regardless of yeah. what it is, race or doesn't play a part. Yes or no. But in this case, she got caught. She told a friend, and then the friend was like, well, what happened? She was like, oh, something happened. I didn't want to. They raped me. I didn't want to do it. 
And she did all that because she didn't want her little crush to find You're out. Like, oh, she's exactly. <laughs> so, of course, the friend went to the police. The police came. They yeah. investigated. They opened an investigation. And a couple months later, three months down the road, she changed her story mm. because it all came out. Yeah. So she's being charged with felony. They already plead her out and said, hey, we'll give you a plea for a year in jail. She turned that down. What do you think so should happen? She's going to trial. To she's going to trial. Well, I think that's, first off, horrible. You know, the fact that, like, I recently, okay, the whole, like, Morgan Freeman thing, I know we're not talking about this per se, but to me, when whenever you make a big deal out of, like, sexual crimes and it's not justified, you're, like, spitting in the face of all the people that have legitimately been raped and legitimately been abused and hurt, so... To me, that I I 100 percent agree. I think that that's a crime, and I think that someone like that should be punished because how punished though? I mean, a year in a prison. Year? Uh, I think that might be a little too much. How old is she? Like 16? 19. 19. Mm, I mean, I think yeah. I mean, they say a year, and then she'll really do what, like six months, right? Isn't that well, what if she, yeah, if she took, that was the whole thing with the lawyer, like, I was reading up on it. So if she took the plea, it was a guaranteed year. But now that she didn't take the plea, it's going to trial, there's a chance that it could be reduced down to nothing and be yeah. all probation or, or I think, more. It could be yeah. up to five years. I mean, it's that's his. That's his department. That's Mr. Law School over there. It, so It's a felony, plus a year up on the misdemeanor which usually yeah. run concurrent, but the concept is you thought that a year was too much. Now, I'm just going to throw a flip side, and what about the hell that these two players yeah. went through having their name tarnished? And, I, and I'll tell and, you something. And yeah, and how them, long would they have gone to prison? Well, exactly. one of them uh, gave up his scholarship and is no longer on the team. He gave up his livelihood. That could be a lifetime of damage. So, and this has happened before. There was a girl who did this to a high school student who was black. He went to jail. Five years later, she recanted. Oh, that was friends. Emmett Till recently, right? Shit. Emmett Till was lynched. Not, wait, not Emmett. Wait. <laughs> let's let's you know take away. About. Not no, Emmett no, no, Till. No, 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 it was Emmett Till. The woman who accused him of sexually... It came out when she died recently. Yes, I mean, oh, yes. That she wasn't. Sure. So but I'm not saying the person that killed. Yeah. So but I'm saying the chick did, accused what, him of sexual What sexually. she said yeah. is like, um, in the whole story, he apparently whistled at her and made a gesture towards her. And she basically said that that was contrived. It didn't actually happen. So yeah. you are right. And um, the implication was what we saw, you know. Yeah, I mean, you saw the worst mm -hmm. of the worst happen to a dude. And nothing, yeah, but that was, was, that was that was pure racism. racism. Yeah, yeah, I don't disagree. That, he whistled at her. Even if he looked at the girl, if that did happen, he still didn't deserve being lynched. This no, is someone's reputation being destroyed because a, a woman decided to say that they that she was raped. And mm -hmm. we saw this actually happen before with a college student who walked around with a mattress with her and it became a national news story. And the guy was like, I never raped her. And no one believed him, ruined his life. And then it came out later that it wasn't all that she said it was. And he, she was still texting him and trying to date him. And he was like, yeah, but where are the cameras now? Where are yeah. the cameras now? Where's the news attention now that it's come out? And I've won, I won the lawsuit. I yeah. won and sued the school. Where's the cameras now? And that can happen to some guys, and it's unfortunate. But you said something that was great to the effect of it spits in the face of all the people who are true Yeah, that really survivors. have had Vulnerable. stuff like that happen. It's like you're disrespecting. That's why I kind of feel like some of, you know, the whole, I'm 100%, I'm a super, like, feminist, and, and I'm all about the Me Too uh, movement. But in a lot of ways, I think some people are making some stuff that it's like, okay, come on now. Like you are belittling people that are really going through st stuff in their life. Oh, because you know, someone at your bot at your work said, Oh, you like nice body. Like, Oh no, you're going to be scarred for life. No, you're not like that level of persecution for someone that does something like that shouldn't be the same as someone that like legitimately raped someone, you know, and like, stole them and kidnapped them and like there's that's a hard line a lot of girls are where do you draw the line between flirtation and harassment mm 
And that's a line that's confusing for men. The line right is now. attraction. It's if a chick thinks you're hot, then it's cool. That's really what it is. Let's be honest. But then it's still not because she can then say like, you're hot, blah, blah, blah. But now I have not consented to your passes at me. Although I even think you're attractive, right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, Does that's it get- why it's, it's BS. That's why people are like, I'm super liberal and all this, but I think like people are being a little bit too sensitive. I'm sorry if people don't like hearing that, but you know, flirting, saying stuff like, oh, whatever, I'm slightly offended. My life will go on. I'll forget about it in two seconds. It's really not that big of a deal. Well, it is a slippery slope sometimes. And that's the thing. It's when I think it's excess, right? Whenever we do something excessively, if you make a flirtatious remark and you can, and I think it's on everyone's part to communicate more effectively. I do not appreciate what you just said. And the guy needs to stop. What happens is a lot of guys take no as no, try harder. It's like, no, no clearly means no. Yeah. You know, sometimes if I get confused between no and now, I'll stop. Like what now? No, I don't know what you said. Nah, and nah. like, yeah. yo, I need to. And, and I go live. I don't even like, know what I stop is. before it even happens now mm-hmm. because I'm so scared that, you know, it's going to be taken the wrong way or someone's going to accuse me that a lot of the times I won't even talk to somebody. I'll just because yeah. I'm that scared. I'm that unaware of what that line even means sure anymore. but that's uh, that's on us to be more aware we should be mm-hmm. aware of reciprocation we should be more aware that that needs to stop like we can't say oh i'm afraid it needs to be no i'm aware and change that yeah. to awareness well i literally just had a long conversation with a friend of, of mine about this and i said look all this this stuff coming up it's not really a surprise it's not a surprise society is literally trained men and women for years that this is okay, this is what's acceptable. Now we're at a point where it's like, okay, no, we're gonna start changing it. We're gonna start saying, hey, no, it's not cool for this. So there's gonna be, you know, a change. It's not gonna happen necessarily just with our generation. It's gonna have to be, you know, passed down. We start training kids at this age. Oh, this is how you interact with each other. This is what's okay, what's not okay. Because the fact is, you know, everyone's been taught even from, uh, you, you get the cat, the Pepe Le Pew dude with the cat that was, she wasn't into him and he was all over her. And, you know, even stuff like that when you're a kid, it influences how you view love. Oh, she didn't say yes. Let me try harder. Let me try harder, you know? So I think the most important thing is just to talk about it. And I think women need to say from the get, hey, I'm uncomfortable with that. And then just teach people how to treat you. Just say, oh, that wasn't cool, but you're still cool. And I still, you know, it's all good. And just let them know, hey, you know. And that's why we have these conversations and and more progression. The Miss America swimsuit competition is no more. Uh, The company has stated that the portion of the competition will now be a panel conversation with the judges where the contestant will highlight her achievements and goals in life. They will no longer judge their candidates on outward physical appearance. The competition will now also be open to women of all shapes, weights, and sizes. Do you think this is a positive change and is it empowering to women? Uh, Yes, I do for sure. Now, is it kind of, are a lot of people going to hate on it? Yes, because Miss America was never known as like, Oh, it's about strong women. It's all about, you know, beautiful women is really what it is. Let's be honest. My mom did beauty pageants. My mom was actually Miss Massachusetts when I was a kid and I did them when I was a kid and we knew what it is. So we're really redefining what it is. So if it's going to be that, I don't think it should be called the Miss America contest. They should just completely rebrand it and just get rid of Miss America and create something new because changing something, totally agree. you know? I totally agree. That's I disagree, right. and I'll tell you why. We, we Miss America is not a government-sponsored entity. This is not a national holiday. Yeah. We don't have to take this. and They are not ambassadors to the rest of the world. Miss America is a competition. If you do not like this competition, then watch or create another competition yeah. that is this. Now, I'm not saying Miss America is right. I'm just saying it has the right to exist. Mm-hmm. And I will always fight for things that even if I don't personally like them, that I will fight for their right to exist because I do not want to live in a world where I have to do something. It's like my thought on guns. I don't want to live in a world where I'm not allowed to have a gun. Mm-hmm. I want to live in a world where I don't want to have a gun. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. 
So right now, I feel like with Miss America, we're forcing people into an idea of what it is when we can simply just not put any stock into that and watch and do something else. Yeah. We don't. You don't like the Kardashians? Don't watch the Kardashians. You don't like mumble rap? Don't listen to mumble rap. You don't have to get rid of something that you don't like. Mm -hmm. You can just pay attention to something else. Yeah, no, I agree with that 100%. Like I said, I mean, Miss America has always been a certain thing to me. I think the thought of changing it and being like, oh, a woman's value is more than just how hot she looks in a bikini is like a good thing. Like, sure. Yeah, it's true, 100%. Amazing. But, but that's why For I think- For the people who believe this, like us, then yes, that is a well, true thing. Well, that's like why I like the name change and the rebranding concept, because I still do not think there's anything wrong with a swimsuit competition or fitness sure competition <laughs> for men or women. So when I was in high school, they had something called the Mr. Cavalier. That was our school mascot. And I was in very good shape back, back way back then. Okay. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> And I went on stage. I had silk boxers with dollar signs on them. I had a six pack. I was chiseled and ripped. We need to remove that and, competition. And let me just tell you that feeling of being on stage and taking pride in my body because I had worked so hard to aesthetically look like that, that was a thing. And I enjoyed it as a contestant. I didn't feel objectified because I enjoyed showing off my work and sure, I enjoyed but physical there's beauty. There's a difference because so you're a man. There's though, a George. fitness. There you're, is a difference. You're not put in there, that there category all the time. But then let's, yeah. But with then, women, we sometimes put them all the time, I'm, especially. I'm not, yeah, and I'm not saying to put them there, but the element of it, we have fit yes. models for our women. 100%. Who go to these competitions and in they Vegas. work hard. They yeah. work hard and they, they love the it. way they look. They have a following. So let's not say that, okay, this is a bad thing. And this in itself is actually a very positive thing. Physical yeah, I mean, beauty the is way a we positive think thing. About it is the bad thing. Yeah, it's a positive I do thing. Agree. But to say that this is the only way to judge someone, that's where I agree with them. It shouldn't be the only way to judge someone. But it is a nice beauty is a thing. And if someone wants to compete in a beauty pageant, they should have a right to. It's the only way yeah. I judge someone. That's why I'm friends with George. He looked great in a bikini. <laughs> Kat Von D had a very goth, Heaven and Hell themed wedding, and people have taken to calling it satanic, uh, is what she did okay? And would you ever have a theme wedding? A theme wedding. Okay, first off, is it okay that she did a Heaven and Hell theme? Yeah, hell Upside yeah. Upside down is crosses, they were dressed. I mean, look at, like, isn't Kat that's, that's her whole style. She's like the kind of gothy, tatted biker chick, right? But she's, I mean, if look, I'm like, like I said, I'm liberal and the I, I don't care what you're doing with your time it's not if it's not really affecting me and you're happy good for you dude freaking live it up like i don't have anything I against mean, it you know what i mean like what are we gonna do next satanic? are we gonna like shut down halloween you yeah know what that's I mean? what like, i mean you just want to talk what, 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 how many christians celebrate wedding, all, halloween right, yeah exactly <laughs> Someone their has, wedding. It's, it's their, their wedding. wedding. Yeah. Like, wedding. No, they need to do less. They need to do less with that. And I think that we're people are going way too overboard nowadays mm -hmm. with, with everything. We all need to chill. Let people do them as long as they're not hurting nobody, as long as they're not singling somebody else out and it's their own thing and nothing negative is coming out of it. Leave them alone. Yeah. Like that's their wedding. That's what you, I feel. You know what's would lame? you have a theme wedding? Yeah, yeah wedding. I thought about it. <laughs> what God. would your theme so, weddings be? So my theme wedding, <laughs> <laughs> this actually might be racist, okay? <laughs> my theme wedding would be, I want On a plantation, you know, and I'm going to have everybody with dressed a whip. up as slaves. This is, this is racism, actually. I want to be Aladdin at my wedding, and I want <laughs> I want to be carried in. Oh, that's Ooh, that's kind of well. And my dog, my puppy Chaco, he's going to be my Abu, oh, and he's going to sit on my shoulder. And I just kind of wanted to let And you're going to have her as Jasmine? <laughs> yeah. No one's going to marry you, but that's a great idea. Yeah, it'd be fun, you know? No, every girl loves Aladdin. Look, Aladdin was definitely one of, if not the yeah, hottest remember, Disney this is friends. A, this, yeah. isn't, yeah. this isn't an Aladdin party. This is your Aladdin wedding. Yeah, that's so, true. remember, every girl might love Aladdin. Not every girl wants an Aladdin wedding. Like, you haven't been fascinated and fantasizing about a Aladdin wedding your whole life. But they did get married in Aladdin and she did have kind of like a cute little Aladdin belly all white yeah, outfit. I remember you'd that. You'd be down with I, it. I mean, Spirit maybe. fingers, feeling the vibes. <laughs> I don't know, but. Vibes. What's your theme wedding? <laughs> oh, could it like, okay, you tell me, so cultural appropriation, could I do? Because I've always heard like Indian weddings 
Could you? But I can't. Look, I can't do it as a theme. For some reason, we've made it illegal to be white. Everyone else is fine. No. <laughs> so I can have an Indian so theme wedding, yeah, yeah, but call yeah, it a theme yeah, because when white people do stuff, and you know, I thought about it, and I was like, on one level, I understand why that's so unfair that we've just like when white people do stuff, we're all mad. If you, but if if a Indian girl got cornrows, we would never say, oh, you're cultural yeah, appropriating, right? I mean, yeah. Bruno Mars did get accused because for he acts white. Music. So we've we've decided if you're white and or act white, you. <laughs> can't do exactly. stuff because of what white people have done with stuff in the past. Like, oh, tea is so nice. Slave the people and make them tea. Yes. Wait, yes. So we Mars must have a spite of tea. We need the tea. Like Bruno so, Mars acts white. He acts white. How? What does that mean? What we've defined as acting white is anytime you do anything proper and well and smart and academically articulate about it, you're white. Really? So that's, that's see, that's decided. a bullshit definition. I, I didn't make the rules. For I making, didn't make the rules. Lil Why is Uzi that the Vert definition the rules, of white? And that's what he said. So wait. So do Vert I act white? That? No, he uh, never said that. I love Lil Uzi Vert. Do I act white? A little. Uh, what? Why? You know what? <laughs> I was like, uh. I'm half. I'm look. I'm sure. multiple ethnicities, You're and I embrace all of them. You are great. Well, whatever. One day people might be like, "Oh, she's trying to be white." I have girl. a question. When you mm -hmm. you do these amazing elaborate parties mm -hmm. that yes. are like raves and. They're events, very yeah. open-minded and wonderful yeah. on these events that are huge, actually. Mm -hmm. How many black people do you see at your events? Oh, dude, we have black people there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you You count? came? Yeah, <laughs> and I can count the number of black people when I came. No, you know there why? were other Because they counted other black me. People. <laughs> I was like, okay, no, yeah, you can't count the bouncer other... at the door who was no. like, no. Wait, I know some of my homies. They were like, yo, you know this is, and I was like, <laughs> I know. And I walked in. But I have a great time, and you're right. It's It's something we need to get over. Being black is being black is something you are and it's not something you act. So we need to break that. I, I was having a dinner with a good friend of mine um, and she was saying that the, the most annoying comment she hears right from white people when she meets them is they go, wow, you're so well spoken. Yeah. And she takes and, and but when I said I said, that's shocking, I said. You're so educated and Is she a darker skinned girl? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I was shocked that someone like you who's high profile, you still have to deal with this? Like, it's not even about, like, it's just insane to me. Why is no, it? No, 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 no. Destiny acts white. So even, oh. even, even white people are like, Destiny. What? Don't down really? the whiteness, buddy. <laughs> okay. Wait, hold on. I have to, let me say this. First off, I grew up with my mom yeah. who was, Afro Latina. Yeah. Okay. So my mom is black, but she's Panamanian. Yeah. She did not grow up in America. Did not. I grew up with more of a Latin background. I didn't grow up. I, I'm, I know that I'm. Do you speak Spanish? Un poquito. I understand a lot. Okay. So like a white girl. Here's the thing. So <laughs> un poquito. Even the way she said, you know, that oh, reminds no, me of. Uno the, poquito. The, the one girl that we had this girl with us one time when we were getting tacos. She and let she us down. Speaks, man. And then she was like. See, si, uh, un taco por favor. Like, bitch, I could have said that. And you know Teron, saying? like, starts, starts speaking over. He's like, con todo, con todo. Yeah. Like, oh. Well, okay, you know what? I'm from Boston. When I first, like, part of discovering myself being a multiracial person, and you know this, is trying to figure out who you are. And I did something. I grew up mostly around white people. Mm -hmm. And then I had a phase where I, like, was super hood. I hung out in, like, the worst parts of Boston and the projects. And I like With embraced Irish people, it. By the way, I just no, want no, no, part. no. The no. worst parts of Boston are all Irish. No, that is not true Irish at all. Hoods no, are way I hung out in Dorchester and the Black Hood and Mattapan, are, and people from Boston hoods, know that. Yeah. I don't know Irish what those are, are but she's shouting out. No, no hoods. people yeah. know that if Irish you're from there. Irish are way worse than the Black no. Hoods in Boston. I'm look; those Irish guys was, are way more gangster. The Mark Wahlberg, do not let him fool you. So was he in like an Irish gang of racists? Yeah, I mean, he. Yeah, that's the whole. Well, there's a lot of Irish. But you found yourself, and you are. But I found myself because I realized I'm not any of that. I'm all of it. Yeah. And I don't like identify. Your family comes from the hood? Well, my my aunt, I have family that grew up in the projects in Boston. And then my mom was the one that, you know, wanted to. Move out? Well, she wanted to be American. Yeah. Like they kind of stayed like in Boston. That's the other thing. Black people 
and Spanish people like hang out together. Mm -hmm. It's different over there than on here on the the West Coast. It's like blacks and Spanish are separate. Spanish, yeah. yeah, but on the East Coast, it's like you're all they're one the same. Yeah, minority. because everyone is there's black. Besides, you can't Puerto tell the difference Ricans with the Dominican Dominicans. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So it's a different culture out there. Sure, and. You know, I have family that lived in the projects and then my mom was like, hey, I want like to truly be American. So she moved with the Americans and she like, you know, my mom worked her ass off. So me and my brothers could get a good education. It was public school, but she made sure we lived in the best neighborhood so we could get a good education. And, you know, yeah, if Tier like, Tupac's dear mama came on right now. I'd yeah, cry. I know. I love you, mama. Fashion icon and designer Kate Spade, famous for her bags and other accessories, was found dead in her Manhattan Park Avenue Residents of what appears to be suicide, there was a note. A housekeeper found the 55-year-old hanged by a red scarf in her doorway. <coughs> the sneezing was contagious. Bless she you. leaves behind a husband <coughs> Bless you. and her 13-year-old daughter. Thoughts? I literally just read this on my way here, and I'm just... You know, it just shows once again that money and success is not the key to a happy life. I don't know what she was going through in her life. I, yeah. It's horrible that she couldn't, she felt lost and she couldn't talk to someone. I've had friends, you know, that have uh, been victims of suicide and, and it's, you know, it's really sad. And I think, yeah. Yeah, so. George had a friend who committed suicide. Yeah, like, and I didn't take it so well because he was calling me and I, well, like, didn't answer the phone. Yeah, that's. So it was tough. Um. Yeah, I didn't take it so well either because it's just crazy to see someone come to their mortality and die. Mm -hmm. And also, he had a lot of stuff that I could have gave, like I could have had. Mm -hmm. Like it was, he was my size, and he had like brand new computer and stuff. And I'm like, why Look, didn't you? So, so Teron first said this to me. I, I tried to fight him physically, mm -hmm. and now I realize that, like, hey, you know, it probably went to a stranger instead of Teron. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I mean, I could have just got you know all those Ferragamos. Like, what's up, bro? Like, what were you thinking? Like, why are you? Because one thing about suicide that we can't laugh about is that there is a selfishness factor to mm -hmm. it, and we have to be aware of it. And I, I, I was as sad as I am for Kate Spade and her family, and we don't know what she is going through, uh, or she went through. It, there's a 13 year old daughter involved. Yeah. And that's something you've never, I can't imagine that person that's, ever getting over. That's it. terrible. But the thing is, like, somebody, we didn't, when people say it's selfish, I sometimes question that because we didn't choose to be born. We're just the outcome of two people having yeah, but sex. That's a, that's a gift. That's a, life is always considered the gift. So what if, technically you did choose because there were lots of little sperms and your sper sperm oh, chose your to sperm fight for fought, it. Your sperm yo. fought to win. Yo, you that's know what? True. I admit when I lose an argument, I yo, just that's lost the realest the, argument. Out of this argument, but dude. That was good. Suicide that is a very good. big problem and it's something that we should be a lot more aware of. It's something we should be aware of. We should know suicide is very real. It's something that's taboo in our culture and society is something we never talk about. We don't like to see it because of its nature, but it's something we must address as people. If you know someone, if you see something, tell someone. And I have the uh, suicide hotline number uh, pulled up. It's 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255. I also have to say, like, I've had friends... And people that I know have come to me when they're going through a really hard time. And I think the most important thing is just feeling like you're heard is the most important thing. Because everyone has dark times in their lives when they go through a lot of struggle. And really what you just need, I feel like, is to feel justified for feeling crappy. Understand. And understanding that it can pass. And I think a lot of people don't have someone they can talk to that can just listen to them. Because sometimes people just need to be listened to. They don't need to hear your advice or your opinion on how they can fix it. Sometime, sometimes people just need to hear, you know, that someone cares and they're not gonna judge them. And just someone that can say, hey, look, you know, you just, things can change. Like I've had very close people in my life that I know have contemplated that. And I've told them, hey, look, you're not, you don't have to stay here. You can, if you wanna go to Egypt, if you wanna, change your name and go live then on a can. boat you can like you're amazing. never where can stuck. people find you 
Uh, you you can find me, uh, Destiny Music, at D E S T E N E E M U S I C. That's my Instagram, Twitter, everything. You guys can talk. And for everyone out there who wants to talk to her, please feel free to do so. Listen to her mixes. I am Teron, literally, at I am Teron all across the board, at I A M T E H R A N. George? I am GK. I'm definitely calling Destiny next time I'm feeling down, not Teron. Find me at Mr. George Corey. Teron, spell the last name, please. K H O U R I, and we are Imperfect, Imperfect Gentlemen. Gentleman. Remember, nobody's perfect. But, but us. us. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Destiny. Thank you.